From the top on down, here comes a one-two pitch. Red Sox win the World Series! Five to one the final tonight! And the best team in baseball wins it all in 2018! David Price pitched into the eighth inning. His second start of this World Series. He worked in relief in game three. He was warming up last night to come into the ball game.
Just an incredible performance by the 33-year-old left-hander who is a world champion. Yeah, you grind all year, you leave spring training, and you fight a team, but you gain a lot of respect at this time. And I'll tell you what, there's been a lot of individual performances that are going to go down as incredible. And each guy realizes it with that team right now. Evaldi, Price. And wake up, New York City! It is the Halloween episode part two. This is uh, Saturday, November 3rd, 2018, and uh, we are here, of course, live on m and um, on YouTube, uh, GTV, and um, all the, uh, throughout social media, uh, BTST Radio TV, and of course, hashtag BTST Radio TV Live, and um, first and foremost, I'm here with Vero G, hey. and um, I want to congratulate the 2018 World Series champions, the Boston Red Sox. An incredible season, historic season, uh, 108 uh, regular season um, victories across the defeated throughout the playoffs, um, the New York Yankees, um, the Houston Astros, mm -hmm. and the Los Angeles Dodgers to become world champions once again. The championship is back in New England, so... It painful for me to say this. Congratulations to the Boston Red Sox for an incredible season being world champions of uh, baseball. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. So there we go. We started the show. We talked about baseball. The World Series is now in the books. And uh, now we move forward. It's now NFL season as we get closely approaching the playoffs. Well, it's not going to be the playoffs for the New York teams in football, uh, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Mm. Yeah, but uh, that's not nothing new for Giants and Jet fans. And, um, of course, um, you know, the past few seasons, you know about your Mets not being in the playoffs or being in the playoffs and being one and done in the wild card game. But, hey, at least at least you guys been in the World Series a lot close, uh, a little more recently than the Yankees. So I could give you that much. So the Yankees have some catching up to do. You know, as far as playoffs go. So maybe we could learn a thing or two from the from your Mets. I'm going to stay quiet because I'm not going to get my full point of view. No, no, I just gave you a compliment, though. Um, well, I, you know, I appreciate that. You know, um, the Yankees could learn a few things about the Mets, which is not much to say, but, you know. Anyways. Because, you know, kiss the rings. We got 27. Anyways. And uh, I know women love their rings, the diamond rings. Yes, we do. But let's move on because there's not going to be none of that today. Uh, no proposals today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, mm. moving on. Okay. Um, unless you're going to get me season tickets to, uh, I don't know. Maybe another story. Another day. All right, so moving on here. Um, so we got the wonderful, uh, voluptuous, um, you know, plus size supermodel, uh, Vero G, yeah. extraordinaire. Yes, thank Vero you. Vero G. Vero G. Oh, my God. <laughs> on the BTST radio TV show. Mm. All right. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> was that good for you? Was it a good intro? I'm, I'm happy with that. That's fine. All saying. right. So, um, all right. I don't know what we're doing here, but hey, we're allegedly here. Here we go. Mm -hmm. We made it, right? Anyway, um, we got out of bed this morning. So, hey, that's another story. Um, so, um, all right. So, we did the baseball that's done with. And now we're at football season now, football mode and uh, NBA. And um, so, we got that to talk about. Um, basketball a little bit. LeBron James. Um, you know, a little learning curve for him in the with the Lakers and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's been having a pretty good season, averaging a triple-double and stuff like that. And um, one of the league leaders in uh, points scored per game and everything. So the Lakers have been doing their thing. Uh, surprisingly, Brooklyn Nets has been pretty good. Yeah. And um, I know I told someone the other week, you know, um, you know, I told, you know, the Brooklyn Nets might make the playoffs this year. And he said, get the fuck out of here, you know, <laughs> you know, and shit. You know what I mean? You know, like the, in the Bernie Mac's voice, you know? May mm -hmm. rest in peace. The late great Bernie Mac. Um, so that was very funny, you know? So, but hey, the Brooklyn Nets actually might make the playoffs. They could be an eight seed, you know? But hey. Hey, if, if they could do it, the Knicks can do it. Well, I don't know about the Knicks. That's a different <laughs> story. <laughs> I mean, if they would have had Przingis healthy, but, you know, of course, Christoph Przingis is injured and uh, he's going to be out most of the year. He had a horrific injury last season, you know? So you never know. But, you know, but next, you know, let's wait for 2019. 
as far as the Giants and Jets are concerned in football. You know, so I don't know about that. I mean, you don't watch much of football, but, I mean, this is the second straight year that the Giants have collapsed, oh, wow. you know, this completely. And uh, they did, they traded off their players already, some of their players. And, um, you know, Eli Apple, um, Damon Harrison, mm-hmm. you know. So, it's, you know, I mean, you sign Odell Beckham to a $96 million contract, you know, to be a star wide receiver. He's one of the, you know, top wide receivers in the game. But then um, you got an inconsistent Eli Manning. You know, he's 37 years old. I mean, you got a a young stud wide receiver, you know, one of the best in the game, if not the best, arguably. But then you have an aging quarterback who's taking too many blows and hits, and he cannot be protected, you know. There's no protection for him, you know, pass protection when he gets the ball. You know, as a quarterback, you need time to throw the ball. You need time You need time to, to scope out, you know, eligible wide receivers. You get them open to get the pass out. But if you're getting rushed and blitzed every single time and there's no protection, you're not going to be effective. I don't care who's on, um, you know, who's out there as quarterback. You can have Tom Brady as quarterback. But if you don't have protection for the quarterback and give him time, to do what he has to do to give the ball to a wide receiver, you know, to make a play out of it, you know, and then what you're going to do. So, I mean, I don't know. It's very interesting. It's going to be a very interesting offseason for the Giants. Um, you know, the Jets, too. Um, you know, this is year four of um, of the head coach there on um, Bowles and everything. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's just a debacle. I don't know what's been going on lately in New York. I mean, exception for the – actually, the Mets actually – had recent success in New York, mm. you know, being in the World Series a couple of years ago and in the playoffs and that. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the Yankees, too, being in the playoffs, being contenders, um, you know. But uh, as far as basketball goes and um, and football, it's been dreadful in New York. It's been a <laughs> drought. Yeah. I mean, the, the Jets haven't won since, what, 1969 or? Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time, you know. Wow. And um, I believe about there. I mean, uh, you know, so, I mean, it's been a long time for the Knicks, too, uh, 1973, I think. I mean, mm. they, they went to the finals in 94 and 99, but they didn't win, um, you know. So, um, I don't know what's been going on with New York lately with sports and everything, um, you know. Um, but anyway, you know, it's real depressing, so I, I don't want to talk much about, bas- you know, basketball, football. is very depressing as far as New York goes. Mm. Um, of course, people are excited New England. You know, the Patriots are going to make another Super Bowl run. I mean, they win for like the past 50 years. It seems like the Patriots have win, win every year. Mm. You know, and then now the Red Sox recently, you know, and everything. So, um, but let's move away. Let's change up uh, things a, a little bit, you know. Okay. Um, a few weeks ago, you went to a wonderful event in the Bronx. Yeah. Um, it's, um, it's a very emotional event because um, it's something personal to us that we both could relate to. Um, and um, that is the domestic violence, and we're both survivors of domestic violence. And we, you know, either we had a significant other or a family member, you know, that was abusive, you know, whatever the case may be, you know. Um, but anyway, we're both survivors of that, mm-hmm. and uh, I want to give you a hug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> You're All too right. bushy right now. So. All right. <laughs> But um, yeah, thank you. We were both part of the event, in different capacities, and um, you were there as a uh, speaker and a performer, mm-hmm. and um, you know it was an amazing thing. It was very emotional in that, and um, it's a stop domestic violence, unmasking the truth event, and um, you'll tell us more about that in a moment. But uh, it was very, you know, it was very good, you know, because that's something that's not talked about much, yeah. is domestic violence. You know what I mean? Um, you know, as the um, the woman and the speaker, one of the speakers there mentioned that, you know, everybody has a mask, you know. You may not see it physically, but it's there. You know, we all have something to cover up and, you know, hide in shame or whatever it may be. But um, in the in the age that we are now and, you know, with the Me Too movement and everything, people have been coming out and being forward, you know, and, you know, you're not hiding behind that, you know, that curtain or that mask, if you will. You know what I mean? And um, I took down a lot of great people, you know, or supposed, you know, you know, Bill Cosby's one of them, you know, prominently out there, 
you know, um, you know, he was America's dad and everything, and uh, you know, with the Cosby Show and everything, mm -hmm. and you know, so I mean, it's just, uh, it's just crazy, you know, it's going, going on, you know, but it's, it is a serious issue, just like breast cancer and everything, domestic violence is a serious issue too, and that should be addressed more, you know, it should be out in the open more, but um. Just speak to people about the event that we were a part of and you was a part of, um, you know, and tell us more about that, you know, the Stop the Domestic Violence uh, Masking the Truth event that you was a part of. Yeah, so um, before anything, I want to give a big, big shout out to um, Miss Shaw Ames. She, her production, Danny May Productions, was a part of that amazing event that taking place in the Bronx, like I think like a month or no, a week ago, right? A few ago. weeks ago. A few weeks yeah. ago. Um, and me and Jason was there. He was there to the video of, as a videographer, but... It was an amazing event. I got the chance to perform there, and also we did. I did a project with them, uh, not too long ago, and um, it was those domestic violence survivors that spoke about their story, and it was very heartfelt to even do something like that because, like you said, it's something that is like a hidden secret. People, you know, people that you don't even know going through stuff like that, and it's like it's heartful because to open up to somebody else. Mm -hmm. It must take a lot of confidence and trust for somebody to open the doors and, and say, hey, listen, I'm going through it or I know somebody because it's something that they're hidden and scared to open their mouth out there for that. So for that reason, for the, this um, Miss Sean Ames that had done that, she's done it for a couple of times now, for a couple of years. Uh, but this is a very special event because, you know, I got a chance to be a part of the project. I perform and also we, me and my, my amazing domestic violence sis sisters, you know, I call them, uh, we got the Medal for Courage. Um, I think it was the yeah, Medal for Courage. Survivor Award. Award. Yes, and it was amazing. It was something we didn't expect that. We just was there to do, have a good time, have a great show, great performances and everything else too. And it was just screaming back something that, you know, giving inspiration to other women and men. Men go through it too. I'm not going to say anything about that, but men do go through it. And um, I just want to give you the courage too for, you know, even though you're going through in the past, uh, you're a trooper, you know? You're here. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're a survivor, too, so, you know. Thank you. You're welcome, man. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like I said, you know, it was, it was a great event. We both went there. We had a great time. Um, a lot of great inspirational uh, po poets were there, too. Yes. Um, There was some, um, so I think it was later or so that was talking about, I think she was a, a chaplain. Yes. Uh, She had uh, something about part of that with domestic violence, yes. and she had a hand in that as well. And uh, it was really good uh, event overall, really good. Yeah, it was. You had great yeah. speakers there and performers mm -hmm. and artists and that. And they all, through their words or their music, they all told the story, you know, including you. And then they had a documentary in the beginning that showed um, women. They all spoke about their past um, relationships and their abuse mm -hmm. and how they survived it, including you. And that was a very heart-touching moment, you know, because... Um, um, I'm a survivor of domestic violence, my father, and, um, you know, seeing that, you know, abusing my mother and myself, mm -hmm. you know, so I grew up at a young age and was, uh, you know, had to witness that as something you shouldn't be going through as a child, especially. I know age is not appropriate, you know, yeah. but as a child seeing that, you know, and, you know, growing up to that and everything, but, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and uh, I'm here, you know, so um, I still have a lot to learn. But I'm, I'm trying to be a better man than my father, you know. And um, if I'm honored one day to um, <laughs> to have a child of my own, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be the best father that I can be. <laughs> you know? No, but seriously. Exactly. Though, no, you know? I, I know what you meant. I you know, know, but, um, yeah. So, you know, cause I have sisters, too. I mean, I have, you know, and, you know, and stuff. I have family and stuff like that, you know, like you. So, you know, so you only have one sister. Yeah, but you know <laughs> what I mean, you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, I so know, I have man. a lot of people, you know, family, you know, whether related or not, you know. So, yeah, we all know people, you know, um, you know, that past or present, you know. And what's that number? Is it 1-800-621-HOPE, um, I think? I think something like that. I know it's a national domestic violence yeah. number that anybody that, you know, let me tell you real quickly before we continue yeah, on go ahead. the stuff. Um, let me try to find that number. No, not a problem. Um, so, like I said, you know, anybody out there who's watching this now, um, they may know somebody who went through it so, or going through it. There is help. You are loved. Don't ever feel like you're down and out because you're not alone. You know, there is a way to get out. Just do it this right way because you don't want to be a statistic. Okay, I just, I just got to say, you want to be a survivor, not a, a, a number. So yes. Some crime, uh, we want to call it, you know, statistic. Yes. So basically. Well, we'll, we'll, have the, we'll have the information at the end of the show um, for people, um, you know, um, a number. 
um, locally for New York City and also nationally. There's a national hotline as well, yeah. you know, for domestic violence, you know. But um, as well, you could go to the nearest, um, you know, hospital, emergency room or precinct or, um, you know, your charitable or, you know, your nonprofit organizations, your church, you know, um, wherever religion, domination you are, whatever. There's, there's ways to get help out there, you know, anonymously if you want as well. You know, so there's different areas out there, but we'll have some information at the end of the show mm-hmm. um, to share to our viewers as well. I think it's 800-621-HOPE. I'm not certain, but we'll have that information later on in the show. But, yeah. So you're not alone. That's what we're trying to tell you. You're not alone. You're never alone. There's people out there, you know, 24 hours a day. You know, there's always someone out there, you know, so there's always hope. There's always hope and help. So don't give up. Never give up that fight, you know. All right. So um, we had that. So that was part uh, amazing event we did. Uh, yeah. We also did the Milk River. That was something different. And then, of course, the breast cancer. Um, Avon, American Cancer Society, making strides against breast cancer. So, you know, we, we covered things here um, besides sports and entertainment. You know, we covered social events, you know, um, you know, that need to be out there, you know, such as, you know, the breast cancer and this domestic violence and other events like that. You know, so that's what we're about, you know, here at JM Empire Media and uh, BTST Radio TV as well. So we give you the real New York. You know, a lot of people, this is what, you know, upsets me a little bit is that when people think of New York, they think of Times Square, the bright lights, you know, Mm -hmm. Broadway or going to like a sporting arena, you know, sports arena like Yankee Stadium, City Field, um, Madison Square Garden, whatever, you know what I mean? But there is a real New York out there, a gritty New York, you know, within these five boroughs. And there's eight million, over eight million people. And, you know, everyone has a story. Mm-hmm. And everyone has a past or a present and, you know, and stuff like that. You know, so we're trying to go out and show the people the real New York, what people are really going through. And it's not just glitz and, you know, glamour, Broadway, you know, and all that stuff, <laughs> you know, that you see on television and the movies and stuff like that. I mean, but we're not trying to have people be statistics either because... The other New York you see is on the shows like Law and Order and, you know, CSI or whatever. And you see people getting killed or yeah. raped or whatever. So we're out here trying to advocate for, you know, domestic violence, you know, you know, to end and stuff like that. And there's help out there. So we'll have more information at the end of the show. So stay tuned for that. And uh, definitely, you're not alone. You're right. You're right. Um, I, just want to, I just want to quickly talk about that with open discussion. Okay. Um, you mentioned about New York City experiences as, as we're, we're both are New Yorkers. Yes, born so, and raised, yes. Exactly. So we know what's the true grittiness of yeah. New York City. And we remember, we're both old enough, we remember the real New York in the 90s. Yes. It's a lot, yeah, it's a lot different than now, you know, I mean, you know, not trying to disrespect anybody or anything because, you know, I am, I am white as well as Italian and um, Greek. You know, I also have a Hispanic you know, heritage as well, just like you. You're mm-hmm. Puerto Rican, mm-hmm. and you know, um, you know. So we both have different cultures in that, but we remember a time that New York City was a lot different, and it was it wasn't the safest place to be in. No, it wasn't. No, but I mean, it's still it's it's changed a bit, but it still has its rough edges. I mean, yeah, but you know, but now it's like more gentrification, and uh, a lot of ways it's like forced uh, segregation or whatever. So you know, you move out a certain demographic to put other people in. Yeah. You know, no disrespect, not trying to sound racist, nothing, but it is what it is. Gentrification is real. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, um, you know, in some ways, you know, gentrification is good. You know, the positive ways, you know, the streets are cleaner or whatever. There's less crime in some ways. But also by gentrification, you're losing the culture, the ethnic culture, you know, Hispanic um you know, African American, mm-hmm. so many diverse cultures. Yeah. You know that we're a part of. You know that we grew up on. We grew up. You know, you know, being from the LES. You know, and everything. So, and in, in some ways, you lose that. You know, because you have people. No disrespect. You know, it's not just the color of their skin. Is the fact that they come from other parts of the. I mean, of course, this is New York. Everybody wants to come to New York. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. You know, it's like Hollywood. You know, the New York dream. You know, be America. You know. This is what the prosperity is, you know, mm. and everything, you know, you know, but um, but when you have people from other parts of the country, you know, or the world come, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, sometimes usually they contribute, 
you know, they contribute, you know, and we're about that. We're, we are a nation of immigrants. We are the United States of America, mm-hmm. the United States, you know, of all diverse backgrounds. We're all immigrants, you know what I mean? Um, you know, so, but I'm trying to say is that, you know, in certain ways you lose your identity, mm. you know, as a New Yorker, you know, New York. You know, in some ways, when you lose, you know, that certain, you know, of course, when people die, you know, a generation, the next generation, you know what I mean? So it's not the same, you know, it's different cultures and that, you know, that's why I love the LES, because um, it's like being in a small town in this big, imagine this big city with eight, over 8 million people and, um, you know, everything, you got subways and buses and you got flying planes now and oh all this stuff. God. It's like crazy. <laughs> but neighborhoods like the LES and there's many other neighborhoods you know New York City is is, is it's a melting pot is a yeah. melting pot yeah. in a bunch of neighborhoods different neighborhoods mm. but New- LES the Lower East Side Alphabet City you know it's it's like being in a small town like in a village and you know everybody you know mostly you see the same faces every day mm-hmm. and you know you have the Spanish culture you have the Dominican the Puerto Rican you have the Asian a little bit you know you have the the Arabic, you know, so you have many different cultures, you know, and it's nice, you know, and, and you know, I mean, you feel at home. I mean, as far as I, I only could give that perspective, you know, you as well, you know, mm-hmm. you feel at home when you're in the LES. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's not the, I mean, of course, it's a little hustle and bustle, but it's not as fast paced as going to like Midtown, Times Square, you know, it was like, you know, room, room, you know, well, in and out. It's a little more, a little more yeah, like laid, laid back, back a little bit, you know, to a certain extent, yeah. you know, and, and New York has different stories like that as well. You know, but um, it's just something different, you know what I mean? So, um, but definitely, you know, um, so um, so JM Empire Media, we offer photography and videography and for people and out there and everything, you know, so, um, and our, our rates are affordable and everything. I know I'm, I'm hoping I try and scare up some business here, like, well, you're talking about gentrification, all this stuff, like, <laughs> you know, but yeah, I mean, but, you know. Um. We, we go the mile for you, the extra mile, and, uh, you know, we're very dedicated professionals, uh, give you the best quality and everything for your service and everything. So um, definitely, you know, f- want more information, hit up our Instagram at JM Empire Media, JM Empire Media, or get in contact with her, Diva and Diamonds on Instagram, and uh, also my Insta- other Instagram, Captain Clutch 80 as well. And so, yeah. Let me quickly just spell that because people may mess that up. Yeah, go ahead. Diva and Diamonds are spelled out. D-I-V-A, the letter N behind that, and the Diamonds, D-I-A-M-O-N-D-S. Just just clarifying that. So That's right, girlfriend. Yeah. Yes, a- two snaps, two snaps. <laughs> She's about those diamonds. You know that. Well, mm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. This is Saconian, but it's not really yeah. real. But anyways. Maybe somebody will get you a diamond one day. Well, until then... Anyway, let me not say too much. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you, you Met fans could use another championship or two, you know? You got some catching up to do, so. But anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. Come join the dark side. Mm. Well, anyways, I'm, I have to put a plug in there always. So, yeah, guys, check out my website. It's www.verog.world. A big shout-out to, to Jason Morello for making that happen. Yes. Yes, that's all. <laughs> Check out verog.world, oh V-E-R-O-G dot world, W-O-R-L-D, I believe. Yes, that's right. And uh, you can check out her merchandise, her her albums, including her Christmas album. Um, that's now available on the website. And um, amazing products, um, inspiring books, you know, um, autobiographies and uh, poetry books um, and, and more. So check out verog.world today. Verog.world. <laughs> check out Verog upcoming <laughs> events and performances. Oh, it's yeah. supposed to be a real plug here. Yes, yeah, so and sorry. you're laughing. You know, <laughs> so it, so follow Verog and um, her upcoming events and appearances, and uh, check her out and show love and support. Um, go to her website at www.verog.world today. Also, do a plug here for BTST Radio TV. We are a weekly social media, internet, and cable television program. We're bi weekly on MNN TV at MNN.org, MNN.org on the Lifestyle Channel 2, bi weekly Saturdays, 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern. And that's on RCN Spectrum 
and Fios. Check your local listings in New York City and, of course, on the Internet at MNN.org and also YouTube, Instagram, IGTV, Facebook, and Twitter at BTST Radio TV. BTST Radio TV, we have wonderful personalities. We give you the real New York sports talk experience, uncensored, raw and real, with the loud mouth, with Vero G, <laughs> with Mel the Lethal Weapon Gibson, with Gia Savitz, the Indigena Superstar, and a lot more personalities, all here on the BTST Radio TV. And of course, we're always uncensored, Mm-hmm. Raw. Raw. That's right. And real. Yes. So stay tuned for that. Follow us. We're everywhere. Mm-hmm. BTST Radio TV. A quick plug. I have to say real quickly. Uh, check out also my uh, episode, second episode, two episodes I already have already on VERO 2084 and also on your um, YouTube channel. BTST Radio TV. Um, like I said, uh, I'm super excited. I have real lyrics on the first one and I had Jason Murillo. Jason the Loudmouth. Yeah, the Loudmouth. Sorry, forgive me. I'll get your government name. Jason the Loudmouth. <laughs> you don't owe nobody the money, right? Probably a few. Let's not oh, talk about shoot. that. Anyway, listen back to what I was saying. Check out Vero G Spotlight TV show, or we want to call it. It's on both of our channels. So. Vero G Spotlight. All right. All right. All right. So um, <laughs> we are signing off, allegedly. Um, I don't know if someone else is going to get our studio. But um, we appreciate those tuning in, um, whether the internet, cable television, wherever you see us from. Um, it could be a cave, an uh, undisclosed location. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> wherever you may be, we appreciate you guys tuning in and the love and support. And we're BTST Radio TV, and we are a movement. Follow the movement here at New York City Sports Talk Entertainment Show. And we got more to come. Stay tuned later this month. We got a lot more to come, everybody. Mm. So for now, this is the Loud Mouth. Jason with Vero G. And we're signing off to next time. Stay classy, not trashy, because we're not Philadelphia fans. Remember oh. that. Oh, he got Mike's messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And um, good luck to the Giants and Jets, and hopefully next season will be a better year. Until next time, we're signing off. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> you a mess. <laughs> Gia Savitz back over here with another interview here at Standalone Wrestling Boardwalk Beatdown Convention. I'm with two beautiful, lovely ladies right here. They happen to be also professional wrestling talent as well. I just met them today. So tell me what, um, tell everyone on the Gia Savitz YouTube page what your name is. My name is Sam Leterna. I'm from New York City. Okay. And my name is Antoinette Ortner, and I'm from Reading, Pennsylvania. Now, are you two a uh, tag team in the industry right now? Yeah, we're a new up-and-coming tag team uh, wrestling in the tri-state area. Uh, new York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, branching out to Delaware. Just trying to network right now at this lovely convention and uh, branch out and get booked as a tag. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so how is that, um, the tag team going right now on the indie circuit? I mean, you know, like what promotions are you consistent with right now? We just started actually tagging together because we were feuding in a few places together and we just got along really, really, really well. Yeah, so it just seemed to work out and uh, we think alike and we're very similar and we sort of look alike apparently. So we're yeah, sort of we're heading that in that sisters. direction. Yeah, um, but in terms of like where we see ourselves going with the tag. I think right now is a pivotal point in women's wrestling in general and on the indies there's a lot of women that are starting to form tags and capitalize off this rush that is women's wrestling you know and the equal opportunity thing and all of that so we are hoping to be on the forefront of that because there's really only like three four maybe five women's tags right now that are even like you know wearing the same gear you know working together getting booked together so I think that you know, this is a market that's just getting tapped into, and we're 
you know, trying to capitalize. And that is definitely true. Now, there is, of course, there has been a transition period in professional wrestling where, you know, they're swaying away from the divas into more of, a, of course, uh, women's, you know, competition or like that. Uh, um, how would you say that tr transition is? Like, you know, how do you like that? I mean, I, I think that it's any woman's game right now um, as far as the diva, you know, standard versus this new kind of more aggressive, like liberated, quote unquote, woman. Like for us, we kind of honor the diva code. We like it. We want to show people that you can be a diva, but you can also work in the ring and kick some butt. So that's what we're here to bring to the table in women's tag wrestling right now. Now, with the, all the traveling throughout New York, New Jersey, you know, the tri-state area, um, you know, which um, promotion do you think is really making like a real buzz right now that's really getting really, really building up their fan base real big now? I mean, I would love to work for um, WWWR. I feel like they definitely display their women and talent in different varieties. So there's all different shapes, sizes, characters, normal wrestlers. So I just think that they have a little bit more to offer and they definitely utilize their women a lot better. So we would love to, love to, love to, love to work there. Well, that is amazing, simply awesome for both of you. Now, where can we find you on social media? Uh, yeah, you can find um, both of us on our individual social medias, on Twitter and Instagram mainly. Uh, mine is at Sam Laterna, uh, L-E-T-E-R-N-A, um, and also on Facebook. Yeah. And how about you? And all of my uh, handles are Real Antoinette M, uh, so A-N-T-O-I-N-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. I know it's a handful, so I have these cute little business cards made so you guys can come find me and I'll hand them to you if you can't spell it. <laughs> All right, ladies, it was a pleasure getting to meet Thank you. you so Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank you so much, Thank as you. always. Okay, what an interview that was. These two beautiful ladies, be on the lookout. They're going to really turn the independent professional wrestling scene upside down, inside and out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right. This is Gia Savage signing off. Ladies and gentlemen, Gia Savitz here, yours truly, for another Gia Savitz YouTube channel exclusive. I am right here in the historic, my favorite place, Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I'm shooting a number of television spots. It's big event season, so Gia Savitz is in hot demand once again for that. Of course, the big event 15 coming up Saturday, November the 10th. And it will take place, of course, as always, LaGuardia Plaza Hotel in East Elmhurst, Queens, New York. Now, as I mentioned recently, we do have a headliner that will be headlining at the Gia Savitz and GSM Productions booth, of course. That is Malta the Damager. We are very, very happy to have him with us, and we feel it will be a great draw uh, for the Big Event 15 as well, as Malta the Damager has an amazing, amazing following on the independent professional wrestling scene. Now, I got some interesting news to tell everybody. After multiple meetings I had with GSM Productions and its CEO, we have decided to have another professional wrestling talent to also sign autographs at the Big Event 15. And it could be very, very monumental. We are in negotiations with independent pro wrestling talents as well as big names. That's right, get this, big names from the professional wrestling business. And it should be all wrapped up within the next few weeks or so, and we should be able to make our big announcement as who will be the next talent to sign autographs along with Malta the Damager. And we will be making that decision in the next few weeks. That's right, in the heart of Little Las Vegas, Atlantic City, New Jersey, we will be announcing who the next professional wrestling talent will be, could be independent, could be a big name, to join Malta the Damager. So, tune in to the Gia Savitz YouTube channel for that, for that update, as who will be there as well. And remember, the Big Event 15 comes your way, Saturday, November the 10th, 2018, LaGuardia Plaza Hotel, East Elmhurst, Queens, New York, Tickets are available at www.bigeventny.com. Join the largest professional wrestling convention in New York. Don't miss out. It will be monumental.
Wake up, New York City! It is Jason Morello, the host of an all-new show here at MNN, the BTST radio TV show. It's sports talk, entertainment, uncensored, raw, and it's real. This is Vero G, artist, model, host, poet, actress. Open bar, spin how I, I feel here. Open bar, this is the real deal. Open bars. Open bars. Open bars. I feel him. Open bars. This is is the real deal. Open bars. Where I am. So there's a couple of parts I'm gonna need you to do. I came in too late. Yeah, I hear it. Here we go. I came in too late. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Open bars, spitting how, how, how I feel. Open bars, this is the real deal. Open bars. All right, ready? Ready? Open bar. Oh, what happened? Open bar. Hugs. Spitting how I, I feel here. Open bar. This is the real deal. Open bar. Let me know as how much I need. Okay. Open ball, spin how I, I feel him. Open ball, this is is the real deal. Open ball. Take it, take you. Gracias. <laughs> no problem. Can you tell us a bedtime story, please? Okay, kids, gotcha. Open my eyes, spit in hell. I feel him. Open my eyes, spit Yeah, girl, did you ready? About to spit this ball for these sinners out here. Real lemon drop, real balls. Every lesson's a blessing. Yeah. When I write this up a different. 
listen Raising my ball to do a different level My inside voice is telling me I'm being a cocky Oh my god, I push myself into the limit There's so many open balls, turn myself into a music hornet I downgrade my circle to keep it smaller I keep my third out of open cause the world we live in there is not sweet To turn myself into a diabetic Everybody fighting for justice All for service to bustin' Married couples to fussin' Cousin what was to cookin' Know the shorty with the big mouth From number gonna see 40 Real lyric drop a sign like baby Haters still be hatin' I'm so an independent like Haiti Not been giving up my soul to be famous DJ was not the same They play with anything to get a paycheck And shout when I was Scoosers Green light, green light. One, two, or three. This must have been for open season. The way these offers up was on the hammer. Stand the barbers home when they came up with their cell phone. A shot when I was the hard on social media. That's that new thing. Gun sex and violence and dummy throwing money up in the club. Hold the stacks to the ear. Why the rest of mine before the meeting? They've been waiting for 45. My style was just like this one. Separated from the rest of them. Like crafted the bucket. Started from the bottom to the top. But I made it, but I still wouldn't get no pop. Two tears in the bucket for the ones that didn't make it. Like Terry Freedom, but Daniel William. I throw the one around with this ball. Heck, the being a superstar. I freed my mind the way the gun clap. Kennedy Cabin is clean. Yes. That's what I do. I feel Street that made me who I am. And when I spit in these dead, these balls for days. This cat around my way, we're trying to get back to the rap game. LD flush the fullest homie. Your woman was packed down like a 40 ounce. She catch a fillet while she rolled my roller coaster. I keep a hopper like a toaster. She keep me around but like a rock star, the poster. Sin has always got me something to say, like a news reporter. They say my blood was thick in the water, but family still the one that messes over. I keep a distance from more than that. They might the one to sacrifice my life for Jesus Christ. Yep. They just accept the wind I smoke them. I'm more than one line, I'm on the dinner plate. Him into nobody's name, they get the famous. I'm proud to say my pin game is the greatest. And when I stop doing the music with them sober cobra center, I stay below the with the music. I'm like an automatic weapon when I'm in the field. I'm like a Mexican worker. My name ring like a Liberty Bell. He's aiming all the look for the seat and pop it. And for a G, drop the chorus ring. It's hard at the end of the day I 
need some distraction.
get it, man. Woo! All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Breast cancer awareness, shout out, baby. And most importantly, we got to smile, bitch. Smile, bitch. Come on. You got a lot to be smiling for. Smile, bitch. Smile, bitch. Come on. So what the fuck you be wildin' for? Smile, bitch. Smile, bitch. Come on. If you're breathing, you achieving. We having fun this evening, believe it. I'm living my best life. Ain't going back and forth with you niggas. I'm living my best life. Ain't going back and forth with you niggas. I'm living my best life. Ain't going back and forth with you niggas. I'm living my best life. Ain't going back and forth with you niggas. Put your middle fingers up in the air. And show a hater you don't even much care. I'm living my best life. Smile, bitch. I ain't going back and forth with you niggas. I'm living my best life. I ain't going back and forth with you niggas. I'm living my It was the summer of 2013, and I had seen my ex. He was hanging around the gym. He started to come towards me. He was hitting me. I'm trying to get the phone. I'm holding the phone. And I just dialed the number 1-800-621-HOPE. I was just someone who needed help and they were there for me and to me that just means the world so that's why I called. <laughs>